there were about 500 players left. In the, the tournament started with about 500 players, and in this situation, there were about 30 players left, I would say. There's a bit less. This is like, I think there's three tables left at this point. So the last time we saw was this, where I tried to scale the blinds, and um, the big blind went all in. So I'm going to try to play through the rest of the tournament. I think I have to go fairly quickly because I only have 40 minutes, but I'll try to, I'll try to do it. And ask me if there's any questions. Stop me if I'm going too fast. Okay. So the very next hand, I get King Jack offsuit, and it's folded to me on the button, and I just go all in for 20 big blinds. So 20 big blinds is higher than 15, right? I said, if you have 15 or less, go all in. If you have 20, you can just call and not go all in. But the reason I went all in instead of just, just raising is because I feel like if I just raised, the two blinds might try to go all in with like something like ace-2 offsuit, and it would just kind of suck for me because if my hand is losing to ace-2 offsuit, whereas if I went all in, they would probably fold their ace-2 offsuit. So I just went all in to get them to fold ace-2 offsuit, ace-3 offsuit, and stuff like that. If I had, if I had ace-jack instead of king-jack, I would definitely not be going all in. I would definitely be raising small and hoping that they're going to re-raise with something like ace-2 suited and then I can call and be way ahead. But since I don't have an ace, I only have a king jack high. I just went all in. So, yeah, so hopefully, um, hopefully I illustrate some of the principles I talked about in class by replaying this tournament. I'm not you know, trying to like show off or like it's just like give entertainment I'm trying to like teach. So please ask me if something's not clear. So yes, don't treat this as entertainment. This should be um, okay. So okay, so under the gun limits here. And usually, so notice under the gun we only had like five big ones. So in this situation, I usually think when a player looks, he probably has a good hand. I think if he didn't have a good hand, he'd probably just go all in and try to steal. So I'm definitely folding ace three up. So the small blind follows the big blind checks. And the small blind gets it in here with 10 bucks suited, which I think is really bad. I think um, I would have just folded. I mean, it's not many bets, but. The thing is, I think under the gun just has a good hand so frequently. Okay, the next hand, I have jack. I have jack 10 suited. I fold here. Um, I think that's pretty normal. It's a good hand, but it's not a good hand when it comes to going all in. Like, when this guy sub on, goes all in, high jack minus one, goes all in, I expect him to definitely have you beat almost all the time. Like, I guess you could have pocket deuces, but, you know, he's not going to have, like, I guess you could have 10 nine suited, but in general, he's just more likely to have something like Ace Jack, King Ten, if that beats me. So, so was that the red flag limping with pair of queens? Um, in general, I don't think so. Um, so, okay, so this hand, in general, I don't think so. I mean, he did luck out here, but for every time he lucks out here, there's going to be another time where he doesn't win, or like the big, or like a king comes and he doesn't get all the money, or there's just so many bad things that can happen when you look. Like you give the big blind chance to win the hand with 5-6 or something, or like, you know, someone else has a good hand and they don't get it all in pre-flop and then they hit a bad flop and they fold, they escape, and, um, I mean, if the small blind is going to play like this and get it all in this situation, maybe calling is okay, but, yeah. Okay, so this hand's got, oops, uh, okay, so this hand, nothing much going on, I just fold, and touch my nut bases and steals the line successfully. Um, okay, so, yeah, we'll see more of him playing later. <laughs> so, um, so this guy knows the lines, not much. Okay, so here, here I fold, and um, I think in the recommended hands, I told you this was barely a fold, I think I recommended that you play, uh, I think I recommend, maybe this was a raise, I don't remember. This is very, very borderline. I chose to fold here because I felt like players could a lot of, there were a lot of short sacks who would go all in and I wouldn't be able to escape. Like say like this P Mahoney guy. If I raise it goes all in, I basically like have to call and my hand isn't doing that well. So I think this hand could go either way. I think raising is definitely fine. I chose to go. And yeah, so this hand is pretty standard and I did try to play this hand doing anything wrong. So here, if you, if you calculate, I won't have good enough odds to call. It's somewhat close, but it's not really that close. Um, yeah. I would probably call with King Jack suited. I would call with King Jack off suit. I would probably call with Queen Queen, Queen Jack suited, Queen 10 suited. But like, I wouldn't even call with Jack 9 suited. Wait. What do you expect the other guy to have? 
I expect the other guy to have us. I, when he shows this, I expect him to have maybe like the top, top like twenty percent of hands, something like that. Yeah, I, I would expect him to be doing this with Jack Knight suited. I think is one of the worst hands he shows. I guess he could show like eight seven suited, but I don't think he's showing like eight seven off suited or Jack Knight off suited. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next hand, I'm going to do raises, and I'll obviously pull like a big case because the line's not the <coughs> So here, so here, under the gun, like all in for four big blinds. So I think he should be doing this fairly frequently. Because in this spot, if he doesn't go all in, right, next thing he has to pay the big blind. And that's going to be a quarter of the stack. And he's basically like, going to have to call with any two cards in the next hand, pretty much. I mean, if he gets that like three, two offsuit, maybe he can get away. But in general, it's just so, it's just a lose lose situation for him. Like, the next hand, if he doesn't get dealt a good hand, he's basically screwed. He either has to call and have a bad hand for the chips or full and we can even finger chips. So I expect him to be very weak here. Everyone still pulls him though. So yeah, so this hand um, this hand is pretty normal. I think I so this guy mad 66 could have just went all in. I mean it's basically very similar, but he could have just went all in because the effective stack size for him was only like Eight big blinds, right? Because everyone behind him, the person who has the most chips has like eight and a half big blinds. So the effective stack size was, was only eight and a half big blinds here. He chose to raise king two suited, which is okay. It's not my. I think it's a bit loose, but it's fine. So this hand is pretty standard. King queen off suit. I think is definitely a prop. Pocket tens is obviously a shove. So I'm not so. I'm going a bit fast, but the main, most important thing to realize is how many bets everyone has. Like everyone realizes that, right? Like I have about 16 big blinds. Um, everyone has somewhere between five and 15 big blinds. Just everyone's on the same order of magnitude, right? It's not like this is 80 big blinds or something. Just yeah. So okay, so this guy goes on for about 15 big blinds and gets the. So here, okay, here I have, so we did this calculation a bunch of times. I have three, I have four and a half to one odds to call with Jack seven suit, right? I have to call 8,000 to win, yeah, to win about 36,000. 36, so I have, I have four and a half to one odds to call, but I still chose to fold. Um, I just think I'm going to make a lot of poor decisions most slot. Like, you know, if I hit a pair, he could have a bigger pair. Like, if the flop comes Jack six two, I can lose two pocket. In this situation, like he basically pretty early, so he, his hand's going to be good. His hand's going to be very good. And you know, if if I hit it, and if I don't hit anything, he can just bet into the pot. I would probably call here with like Jack Ten suited, but not Jack Nine suited. So I'd say Jack Ten suited is the worst hand I call here. Uh, this guy goes on because the blind's not much going. So here I'm definitely calling. I'm calling, I'm even jamming pocket two suit. Like, because um, this guy only went on for three and a half big ones. So, like, your hand really doesn't need to be that good to get it all in here. Um, pocket twos I'm going all in. Like, pretty much any ace suit. Maybe not ace two off suit, but ace two suited I'm definitely going all in. King nine suited I'm definitely going all in. I'm basically game like with a very big range here. Because this guy's going to be weak. And even if I'm slightly losing to him, there's all this dead money in the blinds. So, I'm still going to be getting. So he shows up with Jack 10, so I'm 70% unfortunately at least though. So yeah, it's that. So as you can as you can see, this is so this is a hundred and nine dollar line tournament, the final couple of tables. So you know the, the player is pretty high level. As you can see, every hand basically everyone folds or goes all in, right? I was trying to emphasize this very hard a few lectures ago. You can't, you absolutely cannot play around with your stack. So like, all the hands that I'm fast forwarding through, if you know it's basically everyone folds. One person goes on, everyone folds. One person goes on, everyone folds, right? No one plays around with their stack. No one like calls or like raises small and folds. Like no one just plays around. It's it's inward and the inward of half because you have so few chips. If you're going to gamble, you're going to put in all your chips. Yeah. Do you have a payout schedule for this? 
Um, no, I don't, but it's going to be approximately the same as the tournaments. Like the ratio, like the curve, the payout increase curve, is approximately the same as, the, as what you're used to. Like it's nothing abnormal, you know, it'll be like, say like second, it'll be like, say first place is $10,000, second place will be like six and a half, third place will be like four and a half, fourth place will be like three and a half. It, it'll be about know, what you expect. So, okay, so, yeah. so as you can notice, even as I'm fast forwarding through quickly, you notice there's very few hands like this one that actually gets to a fall. It's very few that just fall pretty flat. So, yeah, so this hand I think both players had to get it in. I think, so if you notice, basically, it was a raise and a rebase, and um, they're pretty much, so Touch My Nuts is pretty much committed, so he got it in with pocket tens, I would even get it with pocket eights in this situation, but I'd say I, I think I'd fold pocket sevens if I were him. So yeah, I'd, I'd get it in here if I was touch my nuts, I'd get it with the pocket eights in better, ace queen better, maybe ace jack suited. Definitely not king of queen suited. And he hits a ten, so that's fine. So here I could kind of call, but I don't think it's good because if I call, the pot's going to be like 60,000, and this guy only has 45,000 left. So if I call, I basically have to make a decision whether to go all in on the pot every single time. And I don't think I can make a great decision. And also my odds are much worse in this case, because he raised 30,000, right? I have to call 20,000 to only win 45,000. So I, I, only have two, I only have two at a quarter, right? My odds are only 2.25 to win instead of 4.5. If he only raised 2,000, I would only call him. But he raised the 30,000, so that needs to be full. Yeah, I, I think I'm never calling here. I'm either going all in or full. Like, there's, no, there's not much fault you have to call here, basically. Because such a large percentage of his chips are already in pre flat. And I'd probably go all in with like King Jack suited or better. I'd probably full King Jack off suit. Should I have a math to see Uh Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I, I mean, he should have just gone and gone on, but I mean, he raised to a large enough size that basically it didn't matter. Like, like if you, right, if you go, the point of going all in is so that people can't call. But you know, if, if he's going to raise to like 90% of his chips anyway, it's basically a business. I mean, he didn't raise to that big here, but it's, he still raised to big enough that it's basically a good ball. Okay, so this hand pretty fast. So, shove with King Jack, definitely good. It's only five bets, so I definitely agree. And the call with ace five offsuit is definitely correct as well. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so here I go on. I only have seven big ones here. I'm actually very short here. I pick up a great hand on the button, and he calls me with ace five offsuit. So that's his call is definitely correct. I definitely don't think his call is incorrect. So he basically got kind of unlucky. Like he got, he got unlucky that I had ace king. <laughs> In this case, I'd say both players played correct again. So as you can see, players are getting it on pretty frequently. You just need to game hold in some cases. <laughs> so, Touch My Nuts has been playing lots of hands, but I think a lot of his hands has been correct. Like, I think every single hand he, I don't think, I, I don't think he's playing incorrectly. Like, he just happened to have a good hand many times in a row, but he didn't. Yeah, so this hand I think is also correct. Jack nine off is a bit weak, but I think it's fine. I definitely, I, I'd even go on with like 10 eight off, but I'd probably fold nine seven off. And the call of pocket nines is definitely fine. So I fold pocket twos here. Um, if you notice, pocket twos isn't in the range of hands I suggest you raise anyway. And I think folding is definitely good because I, I definitely can't shut. It's way too risky to go all in here. I think it's actually kind of close. Like I think with like pocket fives going all in is probably fine. Um, and I don't think raising has much purpose because I'm just going to fold to a raise or I'm going to call and never have the best hand. So I just fold them. And we actually see a flop, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah. So wow. So so yeah. I mean. I don't really agree with Mad 66 call. I think in this spot he should just go all in the full. But either way, I mean on this spot, my player is folding. So 
So this is usually called the block when everyone pulls a big blind to you, it's all space. <laughs> so here I'm definitely blind. I mean this guy only showed two a bit more than two big blinds. Like I'm even showing him with Jack 10 offsuit. I'm even showing him with like Jack 8 offsuit probably. So maybe not as bad as Jack 8 offsuit, but and luckily I do win the 730. So I fold this, I fold the button here, even though I can steal the blinds. Um, the reason I didn't is because if you notice, Spacey FCB, he only has three big blinds, right? So I know that if I raise, he's going to call. There's no way he's going to fold. No, even if he had no matter what he has, he's going to fold. So with only seven high, I'm not doing that well because even if he calls with nine two offsuit, I'm losing. So there's no point to steal the blinds here because I know he's going to call. And he had to call. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so this play I don't like it in general because I, I would have just went home if I was him. He only has like 11 big blinds and by raising he lets the other guy call with something like 10-8 suited and play a pot in position against him. So I mean maybe he just had pocket aces here and was trying to trap his opponent but in general I really disagree with this type of play. Yeah, because like even if you have ace-king, you're in a terrible situation when the other guy calls you in position with 10-8 suited. Because you're out of position, you know, and if you even if the flop comes like nine six two, you bet he can call with with a, with um, a straight draw, and then if the turn is something random, you'll check, and he's going to probably bet, and you're going to just lose. You're just going to fold and lose the game a lot. So, so yeah, this is always nice. Uh, I just go all in here. I could have I could have tried to trap him a bit, but usually, like I said, when you get there's like I could have raised you something really small. But he knows that I'm gonna go all in when I raise because I have less than I only have about 17 big blinds. So I talked about this last class. With any hand when I go all in, I'm gonna go all. With any hand if I raise, I'm gonna go all in. So it's kind of obvious if I raise to a small amount with aces. So I feel like he would have picked up on that. So I just went all in. Against like a weaker player, I would have raised smaller and tried to trap him. But I think he would probably read my raise as a trap and play pretty well against it. So. And like, you know, when I say I think he's going to put me on aces when I raise small, then you ask, why don't I do the same raise with any two cards? Why don't I do this with 7-3 suited? He assumes he'll put me on aces. Um, the answer is, even if he puts me on aces, when I raise small, he's gonna, still going to call with good odds and get it in close swap off of the bat with 7-3 suited. It's not, it's still not good. So, <clears throat> he folds unfortunately. Uh, so I fold here. I think that's definitely fine. I would, I would definitely get it in with like a seven offsuit. I would get it in with about a six suited, a five suited. Yeah, I would get it in with pocket twos. I would get it in with king ten suited. So I think his shove is a bit loose. Spacey FCB. I think his shove is a bit loose, but it's I'm definitely shoving king nine offsuit and king eight suited. But I think king eight offsuit is just about just borderline. And touch my nuts calls. And loses though. The reason I think his shove is a bit loose is because of the same principle I explained. With a hand like King 8 offsuit, what's the important thing? The important thing is not to have that many players behind you, right? And he was in the worst position possible. He was under the guy. Like, even if he had something like 4 3 suited, it might be, it's in, in a sense better in the sense that, I mean, 4 3 suited is a lot weaker of a hand. But in a spot when you're shoving under the gun, having small suited cards is more important in general than having a hand like King 8 offsuit that has high card value, but is being crushed by good hands. Right, like, when my when opponent calls with Ace 4 suited, I'd much rather have 7 5 suited rather than King 8 offsuit. <coughs> okay, so this hand, so the line goes on, and everyone folds. This hand is pretty standard, I think both players play fine. And uh, yeah, touch my nuts had a very bad run. So I just go all in here. Um, so this is the second. So this is what I call a bubble situation. So this is the. This is this. There's two tables left at this point. So it's nearing the final table bubble, right? So when I talked about ICM, I said you really don't want to bust on a bubble. You don't want to bust when there's ten players left and it's about to be the final table, 
So the point is, this is like a prisoner's dilemma situation. If I if I just put all my chips in, I know my opponents will fold very frequently. Whereas if I just raise, my opponent knows that when they re-raise me, I have to fold very often. So like by raising small, I just give my opponent the opportunity to basically jump up the street in front of me. You know, if I can't cross, I have to wait. I have to fold. So. So I, instead of letting my opponent do that, I just went along myself. I mean, East 10 offsuit is pretty good. It's almost good enough to raise and call re-raise, I think. But I didn't really want to risk getting in a big pot on a bubble when there's it's almost a final table. And I do get the lines. So as you can see, Spacey FCB is doing the same thing. He's, even though he has, even though the effective stack size is 20 big blades, like he has like 25, but I have 20. He's still going all in because he, his logic is the same. He doesn't want to raise to 24,000 and let me go all in and then he has to fold very quickly. So I fold. Um, here I'm calling. I mean, even though it's risky, there's these queen offsuit, way too good. I'm even calling ace 10 offsuit in this case, I think. Even like ace 9 offsuit. Ace 8 is a bit borderline since I know he's not going to risk that much on the bubble, but ace queen offsuit definitely good enough. Um, unfortunately, I lose them. So yeah, as you can see, he had a good hand, and he's not risking this that much. But he, you know, he's still going to shove ace two suited here. He's still, he's still going to shove king nine suited. He might not shove as wide as like king nine offsuit or like king eight offsuit. But he's still shoving pretty wide. But in general, in a bubble situation, it's you can tighten it a bit. So I go all in here, and I actually think this was a mistake. I actually think this is not a good play. I. I, yeah, I, I don't agree. Like, I mean, it worked out. I won the hand, but so like the result was good, but I don't think my decision was good. I think seven nine offsuit is just a bit too weak in this fight. I think like it's very borderline. Like with jack nine suit is definitely good enough, and ten eight offsuit might be good enough. But anyways, yeah, I think I made a bad play, but I got a good result. This all is definitely fine. I mean, also with an ace, it's less likely my opponents have aces, so it's less likely I'll get called. Win the blinds, so that's nice winning two blinds in a row. So as you can see, look how much I improved my stack by winning two blinds in a row. So at the end of this hand, I only had one, one, one. I only had eleven thousand. And at the end of two more hands, I you know I've increased my stack by like fifty percent. I have, I have, I still have one hundred and fifty thousand after posting the fourth blind and big blind. So like winning the blinds is so important. Like I, I increased my stack by fifty percent. Here. Same thing, I go all in again. Um, when there's only one player left, you know, just the, the chances are just so good that he's not going to have anything. So, queen seven off. This is probably one of the worst hands I shove, though. Like, I don't think I would shove queen five. And I, I don't think I would shove, I don't think I would shove, like, jack seven off. But, and jack seven off, maybe. But, you know. Wait, this is bubble, right? This is still bubble. Yeah, this is still bubble. What do you think the color range of the other guy would be? Because he has a pretty big stack. He has. Um, I expect to be called by any ace. Um, I expect to be called by king seven off or better, maybe, and like king king five suited, king six suited or better. I expect to be called by pocket twos. I expect to be called by queen jack, but not much else. But I think queen seven is good enough against that range where this will be a positive expectation. Because that range that I said is only like 25% or even less, like 22% or something. So, like, so almost 80% of the time, I'm just going to move the blinds. Yeah. King 10 offsuit definitely good enough to go on. So I'm risking a bit more now because I have like 12 big blinds now, but still, it's definitely worth the risk. I would even do this with like Jack 10 offsuit, but maybe not 10 9 offsuit. Win the blinds again. So as you can see, I, I, I basically doubled up without ever having to win a hand. You just by total moment and winning the blinds very frequently. So since someone else goes on, get a block, that's always nice. Okay, so this hand is very close. Um, I would definitely be calling here if it wasn't a bubble situation. I basically folded because of ICM. Um, I definitely think calling here is plus positive chip EP. I think if I do the calculation for just chips, calling is positive. But on the bubble situation, I expect them to be pretty tight, and I think it's barely a full. I'm definitely calling King Jack off suit. 
and I'm definitely calling like ace nine suited and probably even ace eight suited. But yeah, and even calling like ace eight off suited probably. But king ten suited, I think there's going to be a lot of aces in his range because he wants to have aces when he shows because when he has aces, other people are just like, if you have aces, do call them. So I think folding, it's very close. I definitely don't think shoving can be faulted. I think calling his all in is okay, but I chose to be conservative. Um, yeah, definitely an extremely borderline game. But if it wasn't a bubble situation, it's easily a bubble. Yeah, and also I've been watching this player, and he's been fairly tight. Like, if you've been watching me play through all the games, he hasn't done that much. He just folded a lot, so. So King Jack suited, just go all in. Once again, I'm not going to raise small on the bubble. I'm just going to. I'm just going to go all in so that my opponents can't put pressure on me. I need a very good hand to raise small and hope that my opponents put pressure on me. Like, I guess like ace jack, I would do it, but anything worse than ace jack, I would be reluctant to. Ace ten, safe, and go all in. So, I mean, I've been lucky getting lots of cards, but as you can see, I, I started all this with like, with about 100,000 uh, 100, chips, right? And now I have 247,000 chips without ever having to win an all in. I've just been going on a lot, winning the blinds. I mean, it doesn't always work this beautifully. Like, I was getting lucky that I was getting good enough cards and my opponents were never getting great hands good enough to call me. So, I mean, yeah, I'm not saying this is like all skill, but I'm saying in general, you have to do this. You, you have to do this to assume that game. So this hand is very standard. Both players have monster hands. Queen Jack should be there. So it's more likely that I have induced than him. So I'm definitely representing something. 
He definitely has to be slightly scared that I have to do, so. or even an eight, which is a pretty small curve. So uh, he's uh, he just goes all in, which I think is very weird. It's just too big. Like you know, if he has a good hand, like if he was trapping with me with aces, he should at least raise small. But I have no idea what the purpose of this was, but I guess he got me in the So. Yeah, so he raises here, I just go on with jacks, this is kind of obvious, he builds again. So as you can see, this whole time, there's been very few actual all-ins where both what is called, right? Every hand is basically one person goes on and other people fold. One person goes on, every people fold. There's actually very few hands where there's an all-in and they fold. And this is what all high-level tournaments looks like. There's not a lot of, like, screwing around where you just randomly go all in. Like, it's just all-in and then everyone folds. So this is how high level tournaments are like this is what the dynamics are because everything else is like has a way to be every other strategy is not as good as this one is. So so here are folding hands that are trying to steal. And definitely my hand isn't good enough to go all in. Like if we still have a lot of that. So and he just goes all in he folds. So here my hand is a lot better. So when he calls, I just go all in. Um, Usually when he calls in this situation, I think he might be trying to trap, but since he already did it once before this, I, don't, I, I didn't have that much respect for his hand, so I just want him to wait try to go the hand right here, right now. Um, yeah, there's no point in checking, even though I have a decent hand, because like, you know, even if he has complete garbage, uh, I, I'm better off winning the pot right here with ace nine instead of trying to win the pot post lock and giving him a chance to get a pair of the flop or something. So. Just go on here. Um, he raises here, I fold. He gets the lights. So I do try to make a steal here, and it doesn't work. So, yeah, so usually I, I try to make a steal because the last two times I, I had the money, I didn't steal, right? Like here and here, and I guess here. Like the last couple of times on the button, I've always had very bad hands and I never stole. So I thought maybe my opponents would start to catch up by now that I never steal. That was sort of my logic. So I thought this would be okay to make a steal, but I guess he had a good hand. <laughs> Nothing much going here. Yeah, I fold. I mean, I could, again, put, put pressure on him and go all in, and it would be a full right play, but 3-5 uh, suited is just a bit weak, I'd say, and I've already done it a few times, so he might be suspicious, so I just fold. So I guess it would have worked because the other guy did it. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, ace seven suited, I just go all in. So I need a very good hand before I'm at a point where I'm raising small and hoping that the other guy goes on so that I can call. Like I basically need like ace ten suited or better, I'd say. So even a hand like as good as ace seven suited, I'm just gonna go all in. I'd rather win the blinds for free rather than try to get my opponent to go all in the worst game. Get the blinds. Um, he goes all in here and Calling is definitely positive chip expectation, but it's definitely minus money expectation because, because of ICM, right? So this is where ICM comes into play. I think calling is definitely correct in terms of how much equity I need. Because Queen 10 suited is very good. Like, he's going on very, with a very high percentage. I would say more than 50% for sure. And Queen 10 suited against the top 50% of hands is definitely going to be long enough to call. But it's just risky in terms of it, you know, even if he turned up his hand and showed me that he had like jack nine suited, I wouldn't be certain that I, it would be a correct play for me to call just because of the price effect. So I fold. So yeah. So as you can see, the the risk factor in tournaments is basically you don't you still don't have to go all in a lot because your opponents will fold a lot. So even though you don't want to be risky, at the same time, if you're the first person to go all in, you actually can be very risky because your opponents will fold more. So that's sort of like, it's like sort of like the crossing the street principle. If you're the first person to step in the intersection, even if you're being stupid, the other guys can't run you over. It's basically that principle. So I just pulled seven four off you here. So even with Ace Jackson, I went all in. Um, I think the reason was sort of because I thought if I raised small, my opponents would, because every other time I've done this, I went all in. Right? I've never raised small, except for once with Queen Three Offs. But I think it's kind of suspicious if I raise small. So I went on. Um, I think I've had slightly more chances. So I only had 20, 
I only had 220,000. If I had like 250,000, I think I'd raise smaller. Like I'd only raise to like 34,000 and call it on. But since I only have like 14 big blinds anyway, or even less, uh, the math is gonna hurt. But look, 13 or 14 big blinds going on, I think is fine. Even no hand is really good. Yeah, the blinds. But yeah, I think this hand could have gone either way. I think there's two two good plays. One is go on, two is raise to min raise, raise to 34,000, and call it on. And if I raise small and both of them go on, then I can fold. That's another advantage to raising small. Here I fold. Um, yeah, I think folding is definitely correct. This hand is pretty bad even with really good odds. I would call like queen seven suited, I would call. I would call like king five suited. Yeah, I, I basically wouldn't call that much, once again, because, you know, by calling, I give myself a risk of losing the turn. But, but still, like, with such good odds, I'm, I'm never folding king five suited, queen seven suited, ace two off suit. Mm -hmm. Although with ace two off suit, I'd probably more likely to be, more, more likely to go all in pre-flop to try to get a new fold rather than call, since ace two off suit doesn't play that well post flop, whereas queen seven suited plays a lot better post flop. I fold though. Whoa. Get a nice hand. So here I raise small because pocket queens is just so good. Um, <coughs> I don't care if he's going to call in position with 10 8 suit. Uh, that's in my favor because when the flop comes 8 5 2, he's going to put all his money in and he's going to be behind. So, pot, like with ace king here, this is a lot worse because my opponent can call with his hands like 10 8 suited and it would be bad for me. But with the hand as good as pocket queens, I just do so well against all this random stuff that. I definitely don't want to be going all in. Um, so if you remember earlier on, I said ace king is about somewhere between pocket tens and pocket jacks. But in this situation with my opponent's range can include such bad hands, ace king actually is very bad. Like even like pocket nines is better than ace king. Because pocket nines beats on the random stuff like eight six suited that he could call a small raise with. Whereas ace king doesn't beat it as well. So anyways, I raise it. So I try to steal again here with queen three offsuit. I guess I like that game for some reason. Uh, it works just that. Here, once again, I fold. Like I said, I need about queen seven suited or better to defend here. Even though five three suited is in a way better than queen seven suited because it's connected, the stacks are deep. The stacks are shallow enough where I'm more interested in hitting a good pair with queen seven suited than hitting a straight draw with five three suited. So in this situation, it's in. Just go all in. With pocket queens, I'm raising spot, but not these two off suit. So, a bunch of blocks. Those all in folds. Mm. So, I try to steal here, and he calls. Um, he bets. So, with a straight draw here, I could raise, but I think by raising, uh, he's going to just put me on something like ace 10, ace jack a lot, because, like, any ace has an out to hit a three to hit a straight, right? So, but if I raise, it gives him a chance to go all in with his like six five suited or whatever, and then then I have to fold with a decent draw. So so I should, I just call and you know I definitely have the odds to call right because if I hit an ace sort of six, I, uh, I have a very good hand and that's definitely enough odds plus the implied odds. But um, so as you can see, I do get very lucky, but I bet he folds, so it didn't work out that well. But that's okay. Just, uh, so I guess he played very skillful. <laughs> Go on with ace-10 suited. He folds. So this is kind of nice. Well, um, very obvious play for both players, and I guess he just got kind of unlucky. So, so now, okay, now it's heads up. So now there's two players. Now there's no more bubble factor. Right? So I said this before. When it's two players, there's no more bubble factor. So we're just playing heads up now. Um, and basically, you're, you're going to be very risky when there's two players. Because chip money equals money EV. You only need to try to maximize chip EV. So you can be play very risky. And I raise. So something I've never said in this class that you should know is when it's heads up, the small blind has position to a small. Right? Normally, if you raise from the small blind and the big blind calls, you're out of position to a small. But when it's only two players left, if he calls, he has to act first on the blind. Right? So because the small blind has the dealer button. So this is sort of like a corner case of poker that's that's good to keep in mind. So so you can raise a lot because I'm in position when I raise from a small one. 
that he was lying about the world. And that he was a lying about the story. Oh, he just, he just, I basically had to try to get people all this. He goes all in. This is very close to a call, but I think because I know now my opponent is going to be risking a lot more, because he knows that there's no more bubble back. So this is actually somewhat close to a call. But um, I fold because I don't think my opponent was that crazy. I'm definitely calling like ace two offsuit. I'm definitely calling like king seven suited, I think. So, yeah, so this is very close. Um, <laughs> well, is king seven suited and king six suited that different? Um, it's like it's different in not fights. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not much different. Like, I think calling here wouldn't be a big mistake. Like, it's, you know, all these borderline hands, it's not a big mistake to go either way. And I thought my opponent was more conservative than risky, but. Um, but still, you know, he's going to be going along with a very wide range of games. Like, I still expect him to do this with like 40% of the games or something. So, fold that. My opponent goes all in. It's more than 20 big blinds now, but I'm still calling the pocket sevens. Uh, unfortunately, I get I get pretty unlucky, but that's okay. Go on with Jax. He doesn't play. He doesn't play a game. He doesn't play a game, which sucks. Go on with King 3 up. That's definitely fine. Um, you know, it's only like, like, it's only 12 big points. I would even go on with like queen two suited. Like, I would go on with king two off, I would go on with queen, queen, queen two suited, I would go on with like queen seven off, he folds. He raises, I go on with a suited base, okay. Um, okay. I call, I get really lucky on the ball. Yeah, so fast between my Okay, um, okay, I go all on here because I don't want to let him see a flop. He calls, uh, he raises, I call, um, and I get a good flop. I raise small to try to get him to put it all in, but he folds. So, okay, now, I just go all in, he folds. So it's basically just a lot of folding. Um, so overall, as you can see, his stack is dwindling, sort of. Like, he has 27,000, and I think overall, I'm going all in more than him. So, I mean, I have to be getting better cards, but... As you can see, his stack is slowly basically withering down. Um, this is a very loose shot, but I figured he was he was pretty tight and he wasn't calling that much, so I did it. <laughs> so as you can see, his stack is basically dwindling down because he's not going all in that much. I mean he could have just not had good cards, but like he keeps walking me and So, I mean, I, I happen to be getting good cards pretty frequently, so that's always nice. Um, so, yeah. So, as you can see, there hasn't been a single all-in, but he's basically, his stack is half as much as what it used to be after a bunch of games. So, this is why it's very important to continuously go all-in. Because if you go, your stack will just dwindle for no reason. So, he feels your own basis for sex. But, the last time I can find it, he, he calls us King and um, and um, yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, sorry for all the mistakes early on in those lecture. And next class I'm gonna go back to post spot play. And next week I think one of is gonna come and give a guest lecture. I'm going to announce prizes very, very soon. I, I have I got a couple more prizes for you guys, which is pretty nice. Um, I got more books. So there's gonna be a good amount of prizes and I'm gonna announce the exact structure very soon.